Hello, summoners, and happy Labor Day to you. Labor Day, right? All right. <sighs> Welcome to episode two of TJ TV, where today we learn how to be a better laner. And I have to apologize ahead of time. I am sick. My throat is hurting, and I have a runny nose. But I won't let that stop me from giving you guys your daily or weekly stream. But if I have to walk off to the side, I apologize. All right. For today's, I guess, day number two of TJ TV. I'm going to teach you guys how to be a better CSer, and that's right. It's a very basic, basic thing of League of Legends, but it's one of the most, most important parts in uh, overall gameplay. But there is one graph I wanted to show you guys before we get into that, and it is this one right here. Oh, you can't see it very well, so let me change that. Cool. And this is a general graph of the... I guess percentile of players in each division. The bronze has 60%. Silver goes down to roughly another 20 to 30. And the 10% splits pretty much between the diamond, platinum, and gold. Of course, gold has a little bit more and diamond a little bit less. And then challenger is only 50 players. And the reason I brought that up is because most players are within the bronze elo section and... Everyone always considers them bad, but really, they're more than half the community. And if more than half the community is bad, then what is everyone else? Amazing? I don't think so. So, I feel like this this video should be towards bronze and silver players to help better their CSing ability. But it can also help out gold, platinum, maybe not too much diamond or cha challengers. Alright, so let's begin. Let me go ahead and start up this game. Um... Let me just tell this guy just I was doing this by myself, but I guess I'll have a friend. This'll be a blast. <sighs> and I'm choosing Ziggs because he is an all-around one easy to CS with. And only if you're using your spells, of course. Two, it's he has a attack steroid, which will help you CS if you want to use that towards that. He has great lanes or lane harass. And overall he's a pretty solid laning champion. So let me go ahead and lock in Ziggs after I change my runes. <clears throat> and let's get started. So, hopefully today you guys will learn or better increase your CS. Average CS for most players is around 5 per minute, which sounds kind of low, but it isn't. It includes times that you're going to go to objectives, roaming lanes, even the start of the game, you mean the first 2 minutes you're not CSing. Anything below 5 CS, I would say you definitely need improvement. If you're getting between 7 to 10 CS, and you're doing awesome. 10 CS per minute. Is it per minute? Yeah, per minute. It is a pretty dang good pro level CS. That's pretty much getting almost every single um, creep in your lane. For the most part. And by the end of the game, you'll have tons of gold. Within 20 minutes, you'll be at 200 CS. Alright, so here we go. Six. Let me go ahead and minimize this really quick. Alright, there we go. I should fix the lag. Alright, so we're gonna have to wait a little bit for the minions to spawn. So, when you're CSing, and if you're focusing oh, on... No. Farm, rather than lane harass, I would recommend going with some, um... If you're an AP mid champ, some mana sustain if you don't already... Or if you are heavy spending... Welcome a champion who spends a lot of mana. Ready. Sorry, I'm sick and I can't think very well, but... <laughs> what do you mean? So I went and go ahead to double fairy mind. charm with three pots so I can eventually build a chalice. This helps you farm better by being able to use your spells in case you have to from a range if you're losing lane. Otherwise, I mean, you can harass all the time with your Qs if you're getting your auto attack CS down. So we're going to wait here a little bit <coughs> for our creeps to farm. And so remember, creeps farm at 130. They don't meet until about 150-ish. So, you know, it's easy to leash and stuff. You don't need to get to your lane until about two minutes until, like, the first creep dies. If you get there before then, you'll get at least the EXP and it'll help you stay at par with your um, laner. And I won't get too much into other stuff about CS today because I want to keep the video short, but experience is just as important as CS. If you're lacking in experience, you're going to have a bad time. 
Your opponent should have a lot more. Their abilities are going to do much more damage. Their health is going to be higher. Their base stats and everything like that. And all in all, usually a higher level champion should be the lower level champion unless it's a complete counter or something else. <laughs> and there are power spikes for different champions at certain levels, of course. So let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> when you're CSing, it's good to move back and forth if you know how to last hit very well. <laughs> that way you can uh, avoid harass from your opponent. But if you're really having a hard time, press S and someone like Vayne, they can't harass you too much. So just make sure you're just staying away from them and just wait it out. Wait till the creep gets very little HP before you go in and hit it. Now, for Ziggs, one of my favorite champions, sorry if I missed something, just I'm not paying too much attention. Um, his attack speed steroid, you should know when it's up. It means you can either throw it at your opponent or get that extra, take down a, a creep at a little bit of higher HP. All right, so just keep paying attention to what you're doing. Um, CSing in the beginning, you don't want to be pushing your lane too much. If you are, you're prone to jungle ganks. But unless you are actually planning on doing something with pushing, uh, something I would recommend is if you know that you're a friendly jungler, it's going to go steal enemy red, push your lane. You'll be ahead in EXP and you'll be able to follow up without losing too much experience or CS. And then if the other enemy mid lane follows, well, they're under leveled and they don't have as much CS. And also another thing you want to do when you're um, landing as far as CS or CSing in lane is pay attention to where the vein or the enemy sorry I'm talking, where the enemy is at. You don't want to be in range of their spells. If you are, you'll take some free harass. But know the range, know their ranges, know what your range is, know what the enemy range is, and it'll all together help you be a better runner. I know that Vayne tumbled in, so I can throw a bomb at her and get an auto attack harass in, even though I am going to take a little bit of damage. She, of course, is a higher auto attack damage to me because of her being an AD carry, but it's not too much of a big deal. And now, once you know that your lane's starting to push towards your tower and you don't want the tower to take it, don't be afraid to cast a couple spells. I mean, I did start with two fairy charms. I'm not going to run out of mana anytime soon. And if it gets to your tower, it's going to be a little bit harder to farm. And as you can see with Ziggs, it's not too too hard to farm with a tower. I mean, most of your abilities will be able to take out the creep wave in general. What do you mean? Another thing you want to be careful of when you're CSing is the jungler. Pay attention to your map. If you don't know where the jungler is, assume he's coming for you. Don't push your lane all the way to the tower, but if you do see him bot lane ganking, don't be afraid just to push your tower or push your creeps all the way to the tower so Vayne has a harder time getting farm. Now pay attention to what your opponent's CS is. 32, 34, we're pretty even, both because I mean we don't have much jungler intervention. We don't have to worry too much about anything else. But don't be afraid to harass and get stuff in. If you're a long range champion, that's what you're doing. Unless you're pushing your lane, use your spells to harass. Or if you're having a hard time getting CS, use them to farm. And as this would go on to another video, but I'll kind of point out if an enemy is in a bad position, don't be afraid to throw your zoning abilities if you have any behind them so they can't really escape. And that's when you kind of try to go for the kill. Impatient? I'm not impatient. <clears throat> What else can we talk about? All right. Um, another thing about laning, not too much towards CS, is know how much damage your opponent can do at what levels and what abilities. Pay attention to their cooldowns. If you know exactly when their cooldowns are, you should know when you'll be able to fight them. As you can see, Vayne tumbled, so I know she won't have her tumble up for a couple seconds, and it should be up about now. See, she had her tumble about ready to go. Just knowing that will know either if you can throw a bomb without um, without her having to be able to dodge it as easily. And as you see, I just hit level 6, and I have a pretty good amount of farm. And Vayne uh, is still in lane, and she's pretty low. All I really have to do is just throw my bomb there, ignite, and throw an auto attack. She should die. See, as long as you know the damage of your abilities, you don't really have to go all in as long as you do the exact amount. As a lot of players say, calculate it. 
just know what your abilities can do, what your opponent has. <clears throat> Alright, and now I have 54 CS at 6 minutes and 45 seconds. I haven't missed very many, and that's almost 10 CS per minute. I mean, that's also, you know, you don't have too much jungle pressure, you're not roaming too much, and I do have a kill, so you have to take that into account. So I'm just going to buy what I usually buy on Ziggs. I'm nothing special. I'm not going into much counter items or anything. Um, oh, I have a couple extra gold. I'll just turn it into a pair of boots. Don't worry. And we'll have to say a good day. Uh, usually, you know, I'd buy a couple wards or something. Just to know what jungle is. But of course, there's no jungler in this game. <coughs> Alright, and now I will go play a real game. <coughs> Cool. So I mean that's the basic general idea. If you're kind of new to League, that'd be a great video to watch as far as CSing goes. And I'm gonna go ahead and continue on by playing a real game with just a couple of my friends, and I'm gonna talk about CSing while I play. And a little bit, you know, about laning and stuff like that. So let's see who would want to play. Let me go ahead and open up my chat window for Twitch. I have two screens in case you're wondering what I'm looking at. <laughs> All right, there we go. So, if you're watching the channel, go ahead and say some stuff. If you're not, and you're probably watching the video or something, you know, go ahead and like, follow, subscribe, link, share, whatever you want to do if you feel like this video has helped you out. If it hasn't, let me know. Tell me what you want to see next time. Tell me what I should improve on. Anything like that. <clears throat> Alright, so we have four people. Maybe I should start. Let's see. Alright, here we go. Five people. So... Um, let's see. Oh, he stopped. That's cool. My nose is running. I have little Zacks dropping out of my nose. Hopefully that won't show up on stream, but alright. <coughs> I'll try and use a different champion. Someone who's a little bit... Mm, I don't want to say auto-attack heavy for farming. I feel like the champions that are, have easier times auto-attacking or, or CSing is going to be ones who are 80 carries, because they can pretty much half-shot or one-shot creeps with a crit or something like that. Um, people who have high base damage early game, they can one shot the back line of the creeps. The melee creeps are kind of hard to do that too. Ziggs, he can take out the whole entire lane with his spells, only using two at most. I mean, you could queue the back line, throw your uh, mines in front of the front line and queue them again and they're all gone. You didn't miss a single one. <coughs> Um, oh, Ramus CS. I don't know about Ramus CS. That's tough. Champions who have a hard time CSing are champions who can't target um, creeps, such as like Ramus. He doesn't have any abilities that can really actually physically target them. I mean, he can powerball into them and taunt them and hope they attack him to lose it. Otherwise, he has to either use his ult or auto attack. I guess we'll start with three. Auto attack the creeps to. <clears throat> to get the CS, and his auto attack is usually not strong because he's not too much of an AD champion unless you're building him that way. Uh, he does get AD from his armor, of course, but it is a little bit harder. Oh man, alright. <laughs> Sorry, this is taking a while. <clears throat> ABS is sorry too. Um, where was I? Okay, and sh as far as champions who have easy time, you know, it's 80 carries and spellcasters, champions have hard times. I feel like Shen is a really hard person to CS with. Yeah, you do have his Q, but other than that, your auto attacks are pretty weak. I mean, you can't really kill minions from taunts and shields. <clears throat> but, otherwise, uh, let's see, what are a couple of good champions who CS well? You know, all 80 carries can CS very well. Ziggs, Gragas, Lux, stuff like that. They all can take out a whole entire wave no problem Some people have a hard time CSing oh shit <clears throat> people
people have a hard time testing are people like Fiddlesticks. Um, who do I want to pick for the top laner? Uh, someone who I've played in CS well with. <coughs> let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's just go with Elise. Since Only the spider is safe in her web. Don't have support. Champions like Elise, she has a medium-ish time, you know, trying to farm. Her auto attacks aren't too strong, but she does have free abilities that cost her no mana at all. Uh, which is in spider form, of course, that can help her push a lane. Or just farm, if you're going against a melee champ, it's not too hard to go into spider form, just farm it out without taking too much harass, or without harassing back. <clears throat> Other than that, she's a pretty decent CSer. I mean, there's there's the people who are really hard to CS with, like, who are using auto attacks, of course. Vlad, Fiddlesticks, and Karthus. If you try to CS with them with your auto attacks, and you can get 10 CS a minute, I say good job to you, because that is extremely difficult. Especially because auto attacks just kind of floats across the screen. Um, champions with medium CS is anything between the ones between the bottom and the top. Top CS are, of course, lane pushers, uh, big AoE damage champs that are not ults, of course you don't want to use your ult to kill creeps, unless you're maybe Rammus, I guess you can, or if you're really trying to push hard, AD carries, they all can farm pretty well, Zed, pretty easy, he's the lane pusher and has high AD, the only thing that's going to have a hard time CSing with are mainly AP champs without too much burst AoE spells, Vladimir, I mean he does have his, what is it, let's put my hand on an E, um, but it doesn't one chop the whole one shot the whole entire creep wave, so it makes it a little bit harder. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and go through all the champions here. So Udir, he's gonna be top. He has an easy time CSing. He has his Phoenix stance. He can just auto attack. He has Tiger stance. It's really hard to miss CS as Udir. Kogma, he's an eighty carry. It's obvious. Zed, obvious, easy. Nunu, if you're not using your spells, it's kind of hard because he's not an AD champion, so you have to physically walk up to the creep and auto attack each one. If you're using consume, you better you better get that CS. Um, Lee Sand is pretty easy. He has his AoE and he's an AD champion, so you just have to click them when they're low. Vayne's easy, Zed's easy. Annie, she I would say she's an easy champion to CS with because of her Q. You get mana back every time you you get the full refunded mana back every time you Q up minion that dies or champion, I guess. So if you're using your auto attacks and your Qs, it's not too bad. You can also W pretty much a whole entire wave to death, or if you want to tibbers it, I guess. Zach, um, in lane CS, is actually kind of difficult. Unless you're going to be running in using your spells, you're going to take a lot of harass. Otherwise, you can have to auto attack him, and Zach is an AP-based champion, and I already talked about Elise. So we're going to get into this game pretty soon. 94%, 90% Elise in. Um, and if you guys have any recommendations for my next video, if you do end up watching this, go ahead and send them to me, let me know. Uh, if you guys don't, then I'm just going to come up with an idea myself. I don't know what it's going to be yet, but every Monday night at 8, I will have at least one video a week. Sometimes I'll throw in some extra stuff throughout the week if I'm feeling bored or don't have too much time. Probably not this week, because I do work and have a lot of school. Baby. And here we go. I am landing against a deer. Since I'm going to be going for a farm lane, I'm just going to really just go pretty much defensive and sustain. So I'm getting armor and five pots. Why? Udir's AD, of course. And five pots. If I take her ass, I'll just pop a pot. And I also do have my sustain from my spider form W. I have that quite loud in my speakers. I don't know about for you guys, but let me turn that down. All right. <clears throat> So at least has a pretty good amount of sustain in lane as long as you can get into melee. If you're playing against like a Jace, your sustain's kind of hard to use. What I do use do sometimes though is I'll press W, stand a little far back, and let my little creeps attack the minions to get some health. It's not too much, but at least you can avoid taking some harass. 
Uh, running in circles. Until minions, until spawn. minions come. Um, when I did say earlier that minions do come in contact contact around 150, but that is for mid lane, not for top and bottom. It's a little bit later for them. So you know, if you're leashing, you can stay a little longer without missing that one creep of experience, which it can make a difference. I mean, if the first person who hits level two goes in and harass you, and they have a better level two than you do, you might give up first blood, or you might take so much harass that you can't do much. My team is attacking each other. Minions has spawned. Let me stop. I just want to farm. How fast can they run on two legs? Do 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 do. And I will turn off, or I will cut this video at a certain point uh, once landing phase does end. Uh, I'll, a little bit after, just so I can show you guys. You know, you still have to farm after laning phase. It's not over then. But I will cut it just because I don't want the video to get a whole entire we game's worth. Alright, so let's see. The minions hit top lane exactly at 203. So, a little bit later. 8 seconds later, I think. <laughs> you know, League of Legends is all about math and timing. Uh, one little thing I'll slip in that's not about CSing is three minutes. Expect a gank. Uh, depending on where their enemy jungler starts. Ah. I should expect a gank, I missed that one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and farm it out. You know, stay away from Udir. I can't harass him because I'm a rage champ, range champ if he does go in. I don't wanna push my lane too much, so doing that is gonna push my lane, you know, causing um, his creeps to have less HP than mine. <coughs> Alright, I'm level two. So I know I can definitely harass him and still win the trade until he hits level two. That's what I was talking about as far as, um, Udyr is level 1, it's pretty crazy, but like I said, I should expect a gank at 3 minutes. I'm going to have to blow my flash there, but Udyr did take as much damage as me, and he only has one pot, so I don't have to worry too much about that. You know, my potions are going to heal up. I have Zac right here I'm coming down. Hopefully we can try and get him. Don't have too much. I did ignite him. I thought I was going to jump in. I thought he was going to attack me. I know he has his passive, so he should be okay. Oh, he's going in. I don't think he realizes that Zach has his passive. This is a pretty scary early game. I'm supposed to be farming, but whatever, I guess. Alright, I think I might be able to get this guy. Oh, no. Percent of full HP. Alright, so I'm going to go back to farming. Uh, Udir is really low, so I can push my lane to his tower. He's gonna have to go back. If he doesn't go back and stays with that much HP, he's gonna be in trouble. I mean, at least he's really good at diving. Especially if you have no HP. I mean, any chance you're good at diving if they have full, you know. So I'm gonna go ahead and farm. I can't push too hard because I don't have mana. So by the time. Oh, he does have teleport. Okay, so I'm just gonna sit back. Creep level is about the same, so it's not gonna push forward or back right now. You know, just paying attention to how much HP your creeps have and how much creeps are on the other side. So there's about six creeps on for him and four for me. So his are technically gonna slightly push forward, but because mine do reach first, they get to start attacking first. So it's about an equal amount of pushing coming from both sides. And as I said, Elise is not an easy champ to farm with, but she's not a hard one either. So I'm just gonna go ahead and farm it out. Just Watch wait till the creep's dance. barely low. Pay attention to how much the minions do to each other. If you know how much, like, look at this big creep. Which one's dying faster? The little one? Or the... Alright. I'm a higher level, and I have creeps on this side, so I should definitely win that trade. But pay attention to how fast the enemy is killing your creep, so you can last hit them better. As you can see, that one's dying pretty quick, so you're going to switch to it. I didn't get it, but... And if the one's dying faster than the other, you want to kill the one that's going to die faster, otherwise you're going to miss the other one. As I'm not really harassing Udyr too much, as much as I should, because I am a uh, ranged champion compared to him. I guess he's a piece, but I'm really just trying to focus on farm and teach you guys the There's basics of CS. Alright, so I'm just going to keep on farming. Laning phase is a long time, and compared to most games like StarCraft and stuff, the early game is only the first 5 to 10 minutes where you can get Zerg Rush and stuff like that. After that, if they're not doing that, they're mainly macroing up or going for that mid-game push in StarCraft. Otherwise here, 
Lane phase can go in between 10 and 20 minutes. Everyone they can get quite dull. A masterpiece. So, as you can see, the lane is definitely pushing in my favor, so I'm gonna go ahead and push it back. I don't want to lose any creeps to the tower. I'm not too afraid of Udyr. I'm just going straight for far. He's at 13 CS in comparison to my 33, as you can tell. Mainly because he's just trying to harass me when he can. And if he's not harassing me, he's just kind of just bluntly attacking his creeps without thinking about, should I get the CS for this one? Uh, he definitely can push harder than me, so it's going to be harder to push back, I guess. But if he's not pushing, I should be fine. I mean, I'm going to keep these creeps right here. It's what you call freezing a lane. My jungle is going to gank, so I'm going to try to attack it through here. We might be able to get a kill out of it. I can land my stun. I totally suck. It's hard to talk a name. I don't know. <laughs> Alright, but I'm just going to continue fighting. So, Udyr, he's half HP. I'm half HP, but I am range, and the, ta and the creeps are pushed more to my side. There's if he comes over here, he suspected to gank. I mean, of course, the jungler did back. So he, he should know that, well, he can be a little bit aggressive and stay up front. But other than that, you know, he's going to have a bad time have being half HP and push the tower if my jungler was uh, anywhere near the vicinity. So I'm going to try and keep on pushing back, uh, countering this Udyr's push towards my tower. I don't want to lose as many creeps to my tower. It is a lot harder to farm under tower as a lease. Mainly because of her lack of, I guess, AoE. Unless I'm leveling up W, which I'm not, it's going to be harder to push the lane, push the under tower. And the reason I'm not leveling up is because I know that I can, you know, I guess outsmart this Udyr by freezing my lane just before the tower gets there. And sometimes you got to use your spells to kill the creeps. If you're not, you may miss a few because, I mean, as a lease, your auto attacks don't hurt too much. Uh, you see, I have a lot more creeps than Udyr does, so they're gonna go towards the tower. I need to be careful. Uh, I see um, this in bottom, so I don't need to worry about being ganked, so I'm gonna push this all the way to his tower so one, he can miss CS because of the tower, and because I want it to come back to my tower by the time Lee Sin is actually able to gank me. So, you know, I'm just gonna kinda make it a hard time for him to farm. Whatever I have to do to deny him CS. I know I'm not going to get ganked, so I'm totally fine. Unless mid does come, but I did also see the mid laner bottom. So I shouldn't be too worried right now. So Lee Sin's mid is definitely not top, that means. I mean, it's kind of an obvious. So at this point, the creeps are about even. And that means it's going to freeze here. So you don't want it to freeze there. You're going to want to keep pushing those creeps back. Here's going to go for me. I'm just going to kind of run away. He can probably win the trade just because I have his back to fly anything. I'm gonna repel as soon as he gets in tower range. Uh, I might actually be able to kill him. I don't know. So well. We'll see. He has some potions. We'll let my spider start here. Yeah. The only thing I'm scared of right now is Lee Sin. He was mid, so he can come top. He definitely has the option, and as I am lower, it's very possible to be dived on. Um, I should definitely back, but I'm going to be ballsy and say I'm not. I probably definitely should, though, but whatever. And here we go. Oh, it's dead. I'm going to get the kill for it, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. There we go. So, I mean, I played it defensive on tower because I knew something was going to happen, but I did trade him. I'm going to lose a lot of farm and EXP, though. As you can tell, I have a huge creep wave. Um, although Udyr is CSing bad, if he was CSing good, that would not give him better advantage and it would have been more in their favor, especially because I did get an assist, and assist and kill is worth more than just a kill. So if I'm going to want to go for laning and farming Elise, one, I need to turn this into a randomance for deer, get some boots, and I'm going to buy this for um, some fire cape because I'm going to want to push a lot harder. Buy some wards so it's easier time farming. I don't need pods too much because I do have good uh, sustain in lane. I'm not going to worry about that too much, although Deer has a little bit better time as far as sustain goes. But he didn't buy any lifesteal. How fast can they run on two legs? Um, if you are a top laner, you also can take your jungler's golems if you are pushing the lane hard and just push the tower, go get golems, come back. You shouldn't miss any CS, you can do it perfectly. At this point, my voice is starting to hurt in my throat, but I'm going to keep on going. Pretty soon, little Zach dropped into the out of my nose, but I don't really care. 
I'm gonna harass. I'm gonna farm. I have a ward. I can see him coming. They're telling me to ping, so I'm assuming that means somebody's coming. He's at mid, so I should be okay. I Unless Lee Sin comes from behind. Shadow. I'm not really paying attention to that. <laughs> Big ones. Another thing I haven't mentioned either is how much is CS worth? I mean, it's such a huge I'll part of the game. But a lot of people don't realize how exactly much your CS matters. So at 61 CS, I'll say that's equivalent to about five kills. <laughs> so Udir has 33. I have twice. I'm almost. I'm pretty much two kills above Udir as far as gold goes. I'm definitely way um much way ahead of him. And <laughs> all right, my jungler here so wants to. I'm gonna go ahead and look like a Done again. It's embarrassing, but we should be able to take him out. I mean, he doesn't have class, so he's definitely gonna die. Oh, there he goes. Okay, like I was saying, um, as you can see, little creeps, or not little, they're not little, okay, uh, caster creeps are worth 17 gold, melee creeps are worth 22 gold. Let's take a look at how much they put. It's gotta be a lot. Don't take it. Don't take it. Don't take it. As you can see. 43 gold, so that's twice, twice the value. So you always want to try and get those casters. They also contain a lot of experience. <clears throat> but overall, getting about 12 to 15 CS is equivalent to a kill. So what I like to think about when I'm roaming or diving is, am I gonna miss 12 or 13 CS? Am I actually gonna get the kill? Or may I could just get an assist. And I mean, yes, it is gonna give maybe your teammate a kill, and that turns into about 17 to 20 CS with a kills and assists. Every but web. make sure you're paying attention. I mean, the idea of worth is: was it actually worth the gold amount? Did you gain more than they lost? If the answer is yes, then that was a great play. If it was no, then you need to rethink of when you're roaming, when you're attacking, when you're harassing. Sometimes a harass is not worth losing that one CS. I mean, yeah, it may only seem like one CS. See, I didn't lose any CS, and Odir didn't lose one, and he didn't get any harass off on me. And I'm just sitting back farming. I am approximately four kills as far as gold goes over Odir. And that's average kills. I mean, it's not, you know, shutdown for shutdown kills. It's just a basic zero kill champion killing them for, I don't know around which gold, but I will have a video. Pretty soon, talking about you know killing champions, stuff like that. How much it's worth? Zed's here. I'm just gonna repel. He ulted, so he's not gonna do much damage to me. I should be fine. I'm totally fine. He might come back. I should probably just leave. I'm gonna just leave. I mean, I have no HP. Zed doesn't have his ult. It's true. Um, they can still die free. I'm gonna lose a lot of creeps in experience, which is kind of annoying and it sucks. But it's gonna happen. They're gonna push my tower. What usually happens here is that your bot lane should try to make a play, knowing that mid or your mid should just be pushing <coughs> to try and get their tower. I'm getting a lot of armor because they're a very AD heavy team. I'll probably still get Merc Treads though for the stuns. Wish I had a babysitter. Your team has destroyed I know what Not really. I mean, Zach's only getting twice, and Odir's is being Odir, I guess. Alright, so on tower, you just want to wait. Um, this is another good point for me to talk about is how many times does this tower need to hit a creep before it's dead? For the melee creeps, it's three hits and it's dead. That means the third hit's gonna kill it. And for a caster creep, it's only one. For the most part, I mean, you know, they do increase time. Sometimes they don't increase other times. My team's going for dragon. I'm just gonna focus on farming and pushing. But, <clears throat> yeah, so if you're an 80 carry, let the tower hit it twice for melee, and then hit it again to get the last hit. Let the tower hit the, ca the caster creeps once, and then hit it again for the last hit. Pay attention to how much damage your auto attacks do. If you see here, my auto attack doesn't do too much to this caster, that means the big one didn't hit it, so it's a little bit less. So it actually won't kill the um, the creep if the tower didn't hit it once. It would leave a tiny bit left, and I would miss it because the tower hit it again. And I should be pushing. Happening in the game, but for the most part, you get the idea. You know, just wait, wait for the tower to do some damage. 
and stuff like that. <clears throat> one, two, that one's not dead because I have a little bit more HP, but you know, two hits for melee, one hit for casters. It's a really good thing to know. When I learned that, my CS increased by one per minute, and that's a lot. I mean, the difference between a pro and a bronze is about three CS per minute, probably four or five, depending on how good you are CS. Uh, I saw a deer, he's mid. I'm just gonna take this tower. No problem, I'm gonna lose. My spiders will kill this tower in seconds. And it's gone. And I'm gonna ward up. I'm gonna ward up this, because I don't wanna get ganked while I keep on pushing. And at this point, see, I saw them, and a the good thing I warded, otherwise, I probably wouldn't have, I would just saw them do and just go. Uh, my team's coming, so I'm just gonna stall as long as I can. Alright, they're here. See, and I, as I stalled it long enough to where I didn't die and I turned it around easily. You know, they're instantly regretting their decision. And now, it's 4v5 and, my, and as far as the map goes. And pushing lanes is pretty much safe. Alright, I'm gonna go back and buy my Sunfire so I have a better pushing capability. <laughs> and when you get a Sunfire cape, if you're playing someone like Chen and stuff who gets Sunfire, pay attention to how much damage your Sunfire does. It makes CSing under tower really hard. Because it's constantly doing damage to those minions when you just want to wait it out. Three wards is a pretty good standard as far as side pushing. Oh man, I'm sick and get some water. An ally has been slain. Enemy double kill. Mm. I mean, I am really far ahead of this Udir, and I'm not helping my team as much as I should. You know, I'm not focused on this video. I'm focused on what I'm building and playing as is just pushing. I will join my team soon. Um, Lucien just trying to push my lane. He's pretty well fed. I'm mainly just going HP though, so it's nothing crazy. Uh, they're getting chased. I'm on my way to try and help them. I, it's not. Mm, I can't really do much, honestly. I am sucking at these stuns today. I'm just gonna try to. I can't. If I went in there, I would also probably die. Don't blame your team for things. I mean, yeah, you just only one real way you can get baited into something is if they ping you in. Oh. Alright, let's see if I can make something like this. Definitely not, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna die. It's okay. As you can see, I didn't die very fast at all, and there's three of them. <clears throat> I know Annie's very good, but I'm not paying as much attention as I should to the map. <clears throat> but I mean, it was Annie's fault originally as why she died, and then they just kind of brought her to them to me, and then they came to me, and I should have backed because I knew they were all near me. But I just kept farming because that's what I was playing, trying to do. Um, Annie and Vayne are sticking up with farm with me. I'm currently not at five CS a minute, and that's not too great. You know, at least isn't one of my good CSing champs, and also. Yes, like mid and top is different to me. I'm mainly at play mid. When I do mid, I usually try to take race when the jungler's not nearby and it adds another couple CS per minute to me. Uh, actually, I could actually add another 5 CS per minute if you consider, if you get them every 4 to 5 seconds, but you know. I can feel their fear. My team's raging at each other, <clears throat> so I'm gonna start joining them. Because I am pretty well farmed. I mean, Zed is. He's pretty beast right now. He's got 140 CS. You know, it's not a pro level CS, but he still has like, done a bunch of kills from um, roaming. So as you can see, my Sunfire Cape is taking out the creeps. And they're bringing him low enough to where the other minions are gonna kill him. And you gotta be careful for that because you wanna try and get every single one. They all add up as the game progresses. See, so yeah, as you see, my Sunfire took that one out. Right, I'm gonna roam mid because I pushed my lane slightly. Enough to where they can't come up here and start taking the tower. So I'm gonna go help my team here. This is where about the laning phase ends. And if you wanted to stop here and you don't really care too much about CSing as uh, the team fights go on, go ahead and end now. Let me know what you think. If not, I'm gonna keep on playing and I'm gonna try and focus on farming as I am helping my team at the same time. Oh shit, we got a flash down. That was really good actually. Going in. 
the goddamn Adam Flash. Should be okay. Got my stun up. Alright, here we go. Meteor's getting low. They're all pretty low. Kog'Maw's definitely low. We can definitely push this tower down. Take an objective or something. I mean, they're one Q for me away almost. This is fun, but... There we go. See? They definitely should come back out. You have slain an enemy. It was a good son for Manny, but she's kind of just being a dick, so you know. An ally you know has been slain. Uh, Zed just kind of came out of nowhere, and killed him. They didn't have Zed that fight, which is why we won. Uh, he's the fed one on their team. Udir is very far behind, and Junior is a support. Junior support is kind of not too strong anymore. I can slightly see them come through if they do come, but it's dangerous. The team's getting raped by Zed. Your turn has been them, but I'm just gonna stick to what I said I was gonna do. Side push as long as I have vision on the enemy team. But um, yeah, you see the pushing mid. That was bot. Haven't seen Lee Sin, and there he is. He's just new to here. Nothing to really be scared of. Oh, miscalculated the range of the I'm just gonna go ahead and back. My team needs my help. Oh, what the? I could have swore I saw. Most have to do is just kind of repel. Go back in. I hope I can take some from this. I mean, as you can see, I'm way ahead of here. And although I was half HP, I took them both pretty low. I mean, I couldn't really make a play of that. That was going to show up anyway. But I thought I slowed your mirror. Um, as far as CSing goes, as not landing phase anymore, jungle creeps. They're a big, you want to make sure your jungle is clear at all times. And if you're ahead and you're pushed up to their base, make sure their jungle is always cleared. Don't let them get any extra CS. I'm going to get it further apart. It's probably going to be really good for their team. Um, <clears throat> make sure it is, you know, your jungle creeps. Push lanes, clear jungle. Keep on doing the same. Get that lead. If you're constantly taking their jungle, you're getting more CS than them. They're, they can't get any of that. They're only going to get what's coming to their race because you are ahead. But sadly, we are not ahead, so they should be doing that to us. We don't have any wars because we don't have a support, so now I expect to kind of lose this game, but it's not a big deal. Zed did. He did a good man by uh, Ruby Sidestone, but he should have been supporting in the first place. <clears throat> I'm going to try and help out with wards. If you're any laner, if you're any champion, even AD carries, as far as warding goes, everyone should be doing it. I mean, it's not just support's job. Nope, wrong, wrong key for my wards. Cool. Just took it three times to put that one down. Alright, so I'm gonna push this lane. I'll look to farm somewhere else. You need to try to get I really can't farm too much this game. They're really aggressive. So, uh, I mean, I'm gonna farm over here. I'm assuming there's no wards. I'm gonna keep clearing out jungle. Pushing lanes and stuff like that. My name is TJ in case you didn't realize that. Oh man, my mid quit. So this game is gonna be over. Not too much more I can teach you about this besides um, just farming while well, well, while not in the face. It's kinda hard. It's actually pretty hard. Harder than I thought. Yeah, don't quit, kids. If you're in a game, any game is changeable. I have refused to surrender for the longest time. The only time I surrender is when I have to leave. My friends know they to not to surrender because there's already one no vote. All I need is one more no vote and they can't leave. I believe every game is pretty much turnable. I mean, shoot, who knows? There could be a blackout with all five of those players. Uh, you know, we don't have... That guy just got taken out. Much of the book of Kogma. I'll ignite them so he dies. Kogma. They're gonna come, you know, because that we are different short people. I can't do much. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and surrender. Um, I know I said any game is winnable, but just because I want to end this video, I don't want you guys to, you know, have to watch this suffering. Um, a couple key things after I want you guys to remember is 12 CS. Is a roughly one kill. Don't go out of your way to get one kill and miss 12 CS. I mean, it's that's equal, but if you're gonna miss any more, then it's all sort of not fair. 
Um, when landing phase is over, CSing is not over. You want to keep on farming. I mean, until you have full items, there's really no reason to stop farming. I mean, you don't want to, of course, go side pushing when your team needs your help. But <clears throat> always make sure ugh, you're farming. You're keeping your gold constantly racking up. Because gold in League of Legends is the key to the game. The team with the most gold is most likely to win, unless, of course, their team comp is just so much better and their mechanics are so much better. There's two parts to the league. There's the micro and the macro, which can be completely different to StarCraft. Macro and StarCraft is all about the money. In League, I think it's the micro is the money. I mean, of course, you're macroing as a team, getting the main objectives, but microing as far as CS goes, that's a hard thing to do. I mean, it's individual clicking, knowing exactly damages and stuff. And, you know, roaming around knowing, okay, I can go here, farm this creep camp, go back to the lane before their lane pushes up and they can push the tower. Uh, other than that, hope you guys liked the video. Make sure to follow, subscribe. If you're like on YouTube, like it. Um, show your friends, tell your friends. If they're in bronze, let them know you're only 60% you're 60 in the community. That's not that bad. Don't hate yourself. I mean, it's not. there's no such thing as Elo Hell. It's just most players are in bronze. 60% is a high number. If you want to be in silver, that means you need to be better than 60% of the people. And that's what my videos are here for. They're here to help you out, help, help take you from bronze to diamond. And if, if that does happen, you're welcome. And I thank you for watching. Um, subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you guys next time, Monday nights at 8 o'clock.